come on, Grandpa. Painted a picture of 65 years in one little house. More than a memory, more than saying I do. Kiss you good nights, and I love you. Me and you, baby, we'll walk in the footsteps and build our own family one day at a time. Ten little toes, a painted pink room, a beautiful baby looks just like you and me. Take my hand and I'll be the man your dad hoped that I'd be And we'll build this love from the ground up For worse or for better and I will be all you need Beside you I'll stand through the good and the bad We'll give all that we have and we'll build this love from the ground Dearly beloved, we've gathered here today in the sight of God and you who are witnesses to celebrate the love between these two, Shane Hallbrook and Savannah Pohl, and to join these two in holy matrimony. Marriage is an honorable estate imagined in the mind of God, invented for his glory and instituted for the good of mankind. God himself performed the first wedding in the Garden of Eden, and he also handled the first marriage counseling session. Today we rejoice in the grace of God that has brought you two together. Let's go to God now in prayer and give him thanks and ask for his blessings upon this wedding. Heavenly Father, we recognize that you are the creator of all things and the giver of all good gifts. We come to you, I come to you now to express our sincere gratitude for your gift of love. I pray for your blessings upon this day, upon the families involved and the friends. I thank you for the journeys that you have orchestrated to bring these two, Shane and Savannah, together. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Who gives this woman to be married here today? Amen. Shane. Do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forth, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, forsaking all others, cleaving only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Savannah, do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? To have and to hold from this day forth, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, forsaking all others, cleaving only unto him, so long as you both shall live. I do. The scripture reading for today comes from Solomon's pen. King Solomon was a great king, a great wise man. And a great lover. He wrote the Song of Solomon, which is perhaps the greatest love poem of all time. But I want to read from his book of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 5, just seven verses. Specifically, Solomon's writing to his son, and he says, Drink waters 
out of your own cistern and running waters out of your own well. Let your fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not a stranger's with thee. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Let her be as a loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his goings. This is, of course, part of ancient Hebrew poetry. I'm not ancient, I'm not Hebrew, and I'm not a poet. So I have to take things like this, as beautiful as they are, And I have to simplify them for a hillbilly from Alabama. And here's my simplification of this section of Scripture. Solomon is saying to his son, and I'm saying not just to you, but to you as well, your marriage, if it is good and right and it is as God intended it, your marriage should be refreshing and life-sustaining. That's what he says. Drink waters out of your your own cistern, which is obviously a container that collects water, running waters out of your own well. Water is meant to be refreshing and life-sustaining. And he's referring poetically to your relationship with Savannah. Your marriage should be refreshing and life-sustaining. If it's not, you're not doing it right. Change something. Number two, your marriage should be public as well as private. Your love should be public as well as private. He said, let your fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Be proud of your wife. Let your love for her be known. You'll do yourself a lot of favors if she sees that you're proud of her. Number three, your marriage should be unique and personal. Verse 17, he said, Let them be only thine own and not a stranger's with thee. Don't worry about comparing your family and your relationship to friends and relatives and neighbors and people in Hollywood and people you read about in books. Your relationship is unique. And if you're happy with each other, that's what matters. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful gift. Number four, your marriage should be fulfilling and enduring. He said, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Fulfilling and enduring. Blessed. A good thing. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And he says, rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Savannah will not always be young but she will always be the wife of your youth and you should embrace her as such maybe you'll be the exception you'll always be young number five your marriage should be pleasant even thrilling he says let her be as a loving hind and pleasant row obviously he's referring to some kind of deer, some kind of wild animal. I don't know what kind of deer they had over in those areas, but he's referring to the thrill of life. When you come home from work, perhaps both of you come home from work, and you come back together after a day of deeds and doing things and the stresses of life, do everything in your power to make your home a pleasant place for your spouse and a place that both of you are thrilled to be. Number six, a good marriage requires loyalty and fidelity. This is verse 20. He said, why would you be ravished with a strange woman? That's what Savannah would say. Why in the world would you look elsewhere? You got me. But don't. All men struggle with temptation. We're fallen. But it's never okay. Just look at her. Pursue her till death do you part. And then number seven, the institution of marriage is under God's blessing and observance 
Solomon says to his son, the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his goings. I don't use the word ponder very often, but I know what it means. It means to sit and think. It means to meditate, pay attention, and remember and reflect. And the idea that God's watching you and how you treat Savannah, and God is thinking about your track record and how you're doing, that should both encourage you, because you can look to him for help, but it should also bring a little fear in your heart. It should make you say, wow, my creator is watching me. I better do it right. Not just for her sake and for my sake, but for his sake, because he is your maker. All right, enough of that. Y'all didn't come to hear me preach. What tokens of your affection and commitment do you have? Beautiful. I've had the privilege many times of holding wedding rings for various couples in my hand, and I never get used to it. It's precious. I see here that it is precious metal and precious stones. Obviously, that should make you think of the uniqueness and rarity and preciousness of your love. Always value it because it is precious. I also, of course, notice that it's a circle. And so if you start going around the ring from any point, say October the 17th of 2020 at 4 o'clock, you never reach the end. You just keep going around and around and around. So it represents permanence. It represents eternity. And your love is supposed to be enduring. Shane, take this ring and place it on the ring finger of Savannah's left hand and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. May it always be a reminder of my undying love for you. Thank you. Savannah, take this ring, place it onto the ring finger on Shane's left hand, and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. May it always be a reminder of my undying love for you. Thank you. So precious, Shane and Savannah will be reading vows that they have written for this moment. And Shane's vow is first. I assume you want that, or did you memorize it? No. I'll hold it. You're good. Savannah, I love you. Today is a very special day for us. A little less than three years ago, I never imagined being with you here today. I cannot wait to see what life has in store for us. I love your laugh, your smile, and your caring nature. I promise to love you unconditionally, even when we may disagree on something, or when one of us, or when none of the restaurants I pick are good enough, <laughs> even when you said to pick. I cannot imagine where I would be without you today, and I cannot wait to continue this crazy thing called life with you by my side. Amen. Give him a hand. Yes. Well done, sir. Much better than the ones I wrote. <laughs> Shane Christian, I have been waiting for this moment since the day I met you. As we go into the next chapter of our lives, I promise to walk this road with you hand in hand forever. I promise to be your shoulder to lean on when times get rough and there to cheer with you when the storm passes. I promise to always do everything I can do to make you happy and to love you at 70 the way I did at 17. I promise and vow to love you until the very end and that you will never have to face a day alone. With you, we will raise the perfect family, one in which Bentley and Burford will always love and protect. Give her a hand too. That was great. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you both. Would y'all please join hands for prayer?
Father, please bless this happy couple today and in the future. Bind them together in body and in spirit. I see the family and friends who are here this late afternoon, and I recognize your favor. I beg for you to pour out your grace upon Shane and Savannah. Make their marriage an example of love, an example of beauty, of humility and kindness and forgiveness, of commitment and fidelity and blessing according to your perfect will. And I ask these things in the name of your precious Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is my favorite part. By the power vested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and in keeping with the noble traditions of humanity, under the authority of the laws of the state of Maryland, and with official licensure from Dorchester County, and in testimony to the grace of God, with a desire to point out an example to all others in our society, and committing you into God's gentle and able hands, I do hereby declare you to be husband and wife. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Shane, you may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Shane Holbrook. This day and time that's hard to find is true. The road we're on in the There's some stones right outside that door if you want to prop it open. I was gonna do it for you, but I see you're a man of action and that's good. Let me instruct the rest of you. Uh, I'll dismiss you row by row. We'll begin here at the front course with the parents. After you have exited, please remember that there is a reception at Abbott's in Laurel at 6 30 tonight. Invited, and the newlyweds look forward to seeing you there. Make sure you congratulate them. On the Like a six string, the way 